Hey folks, I wanted to just give a quick overview on the 265 Lab 1. Um, again, the labs for this course are fairly tightly interconnected with the project for the course. So this first lab is going to involve actually getting the initial Git repository for the project and then doing a bunch of playing around with, uh, with Git in general. And we'll see how we go here. I just want to run through some of the basics. Um, Again, in terms of finding it, if you go to the main course webpage and then hit lab resources, and of course there's information about the labs in general, but we're interested for now in lab exercise one. And again, it's got links back to the main lab page for checking the deadline for this, which is I think Thursday. Uh, if this is your first time in one of our in, first time in one of our CSCI courses, so if you are kind of new to Linux, new to our servers, then I've thrown in a link that walks you through that first process of getting connected. Um, this kind of assumes that you're connecting from a Windows machine. Um, if you're already, if you're actually sitting in our uh, lab downstairs in lab 115 in uh, building 315, then you don't need to worry about going through the uh, setting up a Windows PowerShell window and connecting through that, so you can skip that step. But again, it walks you through fairly basically the process of getting connected and a little bit of an intro to some basic Linux. But I'm going to assume that uh, you've worked your way through that. Um, actually, if you want to check, if you are new to that, it might be worthwhile checking out my CSCI 160 pages since there's uh, much more in-depth intros to Linux and the labs in there for the, the first time students in our first year program. Uh, let's see. I'm going to assume for now that you've had a chance to go through and read the project description. If you haven't yet, we'll come back and talk about that in, uh, I guess, around step four here. And there are additional resources available for more information about Git, uh, Git in general, uh, the general process that we follow for getting and submitting things using Git, and of course the uh, the lecture resources page where we talk about the theory and um, more involved videos about the about version control in general and all the other topics for the term. So what we're actually doing in this lab is creating the your server side copy of the project repository. That's the one that I get to see when I'm marking it, and we're going to go through and clone that into your own directory on the CSCI servers so that you can work on it. And then we'll go through this cycle of playing with it, uh, making changes in your working copy, and pushing those changes back periodically to the server side so that I can see them. And so we're going to go through this cycle a couple of times. Uh, one of the steps here involves creating a man page, a help page for the project. So this is going to essentially be a user-based description of what the project is supposed to do when it eventually works. And that's where you'll have to go back and kind of read through the project description so you get an understanding of what the program is eventually supposed to do. Right, right now it doesn't do anything. And again, since we want to get some practice with Git and version control, after we've got things basically set up, we're going to create a new branch just for lab one for the project. And we're going to go into that branch and do some work there, make some changes there. We're going to return to the main branch for the project and do some work there, make some changes there. And so now we've got two branches with different content and we're going to try and merge them together. And the way things are laid out, this will force a merge conflict that you'll have to resolve, you know, following the mechanisms that we talked about in class. And then a few more bits and pieces just to wrap things up. And again, periodically, you're going to be pushing things back to the uh, central Git server so that I can see it and mark it. Now, you do need to be fairly, fairly careful about following the, uh, the lab instructions here. Um, if you miss some steps or uh, do some steps out of order, then you're going to find it doesn't actually create a, a, a merge conflict when you get there. So you do want to go through fairly methodically, step by step, and uh, take a look at what's going on as we go. Uh, just a note, if you've taken CSCI 265 before, then you've probably got a CSCI 265 directory already. Um, I've probably got one in my student account here. Yeah, so I've got uh, 
I've currently got a 265 directory. So what I would suggest is, you know, if you don't want to lose your old stuff, then just move it to you know, something like an old 265 or a 265 archive. Oh, I've actually done this previously. You can see I've already got a, an old 265. So maybe I'll uh, create an older 265. Oops. So I want to move my CSCI 265 into an older 265. All right. And then we'll follow through the steps for this year. So uh, double check that the project repository has been posted. It has been. Um, so you can skip through uh, step zero there. Uh, we'll go through and again, this first step is sending a command to our CSCI server, the Git server, telling it to create a copy of the main project repository that I post and put that copy in your space on that server. So we're going to give that a try. Uh, SSH dash X CSCI server CSCI 260. Oops. Do we need the colon in there? Da, 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 da. No, that's right. I want to fork the CSCI 265. Uh, it's called project is the repository I'm trying to duplicate. The duplicate I want to make is 265 in my own space, also called project. And hopefully I haven't messed anything up there. And it will go through the process and it appears to think it's actually succeeded. So that brings us to the end of this first step. Um, you'll notice that I used a dollar user when I was entering this command. That's an environment variable that automatically substitutes in your username there. So it correctly sticks in the Dave stew there for me. Uh, let's see, plowing our way along here. Now we want to go through, create a directory for our 265 stuff for this year. And then we're going, going to copy or clone that cop that uh, repository of our own on the central server into the local space for us to work on. So I'm just going to make sure I'm in my central directory. I am. I want to create a directory for my 265 stuff. There we go. I'm going to now clone from the CSCI server the 265 dollar users slash project repository I just created and I want to put it in my 265 directory in a directory or repository called project. So this should copy it across to my local working space. Yay. It seems to think it worked. So we'll go into our CSCI 265 directory and we see our project there and we go into project and we see a bunch of files that I initially set up for the project itself. So, so far so good. Uh, we're gonna try compiling the project and see if that works and we're gonna try running it. So it's just the make file here has instructions to compile it and hopefully nothing goes horribly wrong. Just do a make and it seems to think it created it. And so we'll try running the project executable. And again, all the executable does right now is just print out a one printf statement. If you have a look in the project.cpp file there, you'll see it's just a, a, a glorified hello world at the moment. And of course, over the semester, you're going to be designing a solution for the project and writing the code for it. Now, step four is something that you can complete later if you want. I threw, had to put it in someplace in here, so I stuck it in in step four. Again, you're going to be creating a help page that gives a user-based description of what the program is supposed to do when it eventually works. And again, this is user-focused, right? If you have a look at a few different man pages, you can uh, uh, get kind of a feel for the sorts of information that should go in them. This one, if you want to have a look at what the man page looks like right now, or after you edit it, what your updated version looks like, it's man is the manual program, the help program. And show you this, you'll see that there's a directory called man one that's already been created. And it actually has the 
starter man page for your project in there. So we'll try man, man1 slash project, and this will run the, the manual utility on the current version of the man page, the help page. So right now, the man page has, uh, you know, just a bunch of kind of default bits and pieces that I've thrown in there that really aren't relevant other than telling you kind of what should go in these different pieces. So you're going to go through and edit it, edit the man page and replace it with um, appropriate content. So if you want to have a look at what's in there, um, again, it's in a file called project. So you can use your favorite editor and just edit it. It's just a text file. And again, you'll see that it's got different man page formatting commands in it. And then you'll see the actual text that's cropping up that I've placed in there and that you're going to replace. So you're going to be replacing, you know, things like the options list or replacing things like the description here. So you're going to be going through editing this to be an appropriate help page describing to the user how to use the program effectively, you know, assuming it actually was completed and working. And of course, I'm going to make changes to the project specifications as the term goes on, and you're going to be updating your man page when that happens. So you can do this pretty much at any time, but I do want you to have it completed for the Thursday deadline for the lab. But you don't have to do it right at this point in the, the lab session. All right. And then the process basically goes to creating and switching between the different branches. So and again, we're back in the main directory for our repository. We've got this collection of files in there. If I create a new branch, then it's going to create a duplicate of these under the, the new label. So I can start, I can do some things in my main branch, my master branch, and other things in my, say, my lab one branch. And the files are, if you like, independent from one another. Changing the lab one branch doesn't change the, the master branch and vice versa. So the command again was this uh, git branch and the name of the new branch you want to create. So git branch lab one. So that's created a duplicate branch, but at the moment I'm still in my master branch. So if you just type in git branch, it'll give you a list of them. So you can see I've got a lab one branch and I've got a master branch and that asterisk tells me that I'm in my master right now. So to switch from one branch to another. We use the git checkout. So let's say git checkout lab one. And again, if we do our git branch, it'll show us that we're now on our lab one branch. So what you're going to be doing for the rest of this, I'm not going to show kind of all the steps, but you can work through this. What you're going to be doing for the rest of this is working your way through a sequence of different bash exercises in the two branches, switching back and forth between them. So we switch to our lab one branch, and then we'll do a bunch of different exercises that are creating and updating files in the lab one branch. We're gonna be doing git adds to record the changes that we've made and git commits to make sure that we um, sort of take these snapshots of what the project looks like right now, or at least that branch of the project looks like right now. And periodically, we're going to be doing these git pushes to send all the changes that we've committed back to the server side so that I can see them. So in 5b there, you're basically working in the lab one branch. And then in 6a, you're going to check out the master branch. And again, do make sure that you you Remember to do your to switch your branches when uh, when asked. Otherwise, you're not going to get the conflicts that this is trying to create. So you're going to check out the master branch, and again, do a git branch afterwards to check and make sure that now you are in your master. And again, we'll do a few different bash exercises that are going to change some files in the master branch. You're going to do an add and a commit so that you record those changes and eventually push them back to the server. And then, remember, we're still in our master branch. We're going to merge the changes that were over in the lab one branch back into the current one. So we say git merge lab one, meaning go off and grab what's in lab one and merge it into the thing I'm in now, my master branch. And once that's done, this my files will be different in your lab one branch than in your master branch. And you're going to see a conflict when you go through to edit 
my files, you'll see a bunch of these less than signs. Well, you'll see a bunch of code perhaps, or a bunch of, of text, and then maybe a bunch of these less thans, and then a bunch of lines of content, and a line of equal signs, and a bunch of content, and a bunch of greater than signs, and then more content. Again, these reflect what's different in the lab one version of the files than in the master branch version of the files. And so what you're going to do is get rid of those three lines of less thans, equals, and greater thans, and keep all of the content from both the lab one stuff and the uh, um, master branch stuff. So you're essentially just getting rid of those three lines for now. Once you've done that, you can do a git add and your merge should actually complete. So we'll do a, a push again to get everything back. And then we'll wrap up with a little bit more work here. So you can get a, a sort of ASCII visualization of the branches and the commits that you've done in a project using this git log. So if we do it right now, it's not going to look terribly interesting. Git log uh, graph pretty. Have I got my options right? It looks like it. And so you see this kind of visualization where it's got this chain of uh, um, what commits were made and when. So there was a commit at um, whatever, 320, or pardon me, the, the original one is at the bottom, a commit at 322 on the 13th. And then later on, there was a commit that was based at uh, whatever, 324 on the 13th. But once you've got your branches and things in, you'll see it kind of branching out and, and rejoining and whatnot. So you'll get a good look at uh, at the structure of the branches and merges that you've created as time goes on. All right. Um, again, you just want to make sure you get through all of the different steps. Make sure you do a final add and commit of all your your various changes and a git push or a git push origin all to make sure all the branches get pushed back to the server so I can mark it, and you should be in good shape. All right. I will leave that one there.